2017 NBA season is over. Of course, last night, Game 5 of the NBA Finals, the Golden State Warriors defeated the Cleveland Cavaliers in 5 um, and took the 2017 NBA Finals Championship for themselves, led by Finals MVP and new the Warrior to this year, Kevin Durant. I know it feels like he's been there for a while, um, but... It's, it honestly still feels weird to me to see him in that jersey. It just feels wrong, and it's going to feel that way for a long time, at least for me. Um, you guys should know my opinion on this, um, should know, you know, how I feel about Kevin Durant. But in this video, well, we're going to be talking all about Kevin Durant, and it's probably going to weigh in a lot to my evaluation of this year's finals, his performance, and of course, Kevin Durant really completing uh, the, the overall task that he had assigned himself, that was he wanted a ring. Everybody knows this. The guy wouldn't have jumped on the 73-win team bandwagon if he didn't want the ring. Obviously, we all know, look, you just want your ring. You didn't get it in OKC in eight years. You're a top elite player, a top player ever. You're probably going to go down top 20 player to ever live, maybe even top 15. Um, and, you know, a player like that, I don't think those guys want to be like, Carl Malone and Charles Barkley and Allen Iverson and Reggie Miller. I could name, I could go on and on and on. Players that don't have rings, their legacy, you know, none of the top five players. I don't think any of us, you know, have a player in our top five that hasn't won a ring. I don't think we do. And that's just because of the fact that rings often define your legacy. And I don't think that, I don't really agree with that. Yes, I know the prospect of the game is to win, um, but it really depends on you know what you do with the hand you're given and again who you're playing against i mean i think that yeah jordan was amazing and yeah the six rings definitely add to his legacy but if it weren't for jordan's dominance if jordan had lost one of those finals we would not he would not be getting nearly the credit he's getting but he went six and oh and that's a huge deal to people and casual fans will look at that and say look six and oh you can't beat six and oh um so that's one thing, and I think that, you know, you look at guys like Allen Iverson, Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, why aren't those guys top 15 players? Well, because they don't have a ring. I mean, that's usually the response you get, but I think it's better to look at, you know, other parts of their games to define, you know, how good they are. I don't think it's fair to say that. You could look at who they ran into and who they lost to. Um, you know, Carl Malone's a little bit pathetic because, you know, he joined the Lakers at the end. And they still couldn't do it, um, but when he was in the Jazz... You know, they had lots of opportunities. They ran into that Bulls team. They couldn't do it. So, you know, I don't think rings really should determine a legacy as much as people are making it out to be. Yes, it's important. Yes, the object of the game is to win the ring. Um, but, you know, in certain situations, you won't get the ring. That's why I hate how people are... No one's going to stop talking about this LeBron 3-5 and five finals record when I just think it's ridiculous. We should be appreciating what the guy does for the game, the generational talent he is, and how they needed four all-stars. They needed to, to, to combine 73-win team and a top three player in the NBA just to beat him. And, you know, you can say, oh, 3-5, and 3-5. and five. Well, nobody else in the league would have beat the Warriors. Not even close. So, and yeah, maybe the Spurs, if they were healthy. Oh, man, I'm really salty about that, too, because I hated Kawhi Leonard getting injured. I love Kawhi Leonard, and I really wanted the Spurs to put up a huge fight against the Warriors. We'd have a great series. And I don't know if the Spurs would have won, but look, I don't think it, it's so the way the Warriors are playing in the finals. It was just incredible. Now, back to Kevin Durant. Um, obviously, you know, I've been probably been quoted many times this year to say, look, if Kevin Durant wins a ring with the Warriors, it doesn't count. It doesn't really mean anything. It's a cheap ring. Now, some of this, I don't know, it does, it, it counts, it counts, but it doesn't count for as much. And yeah, I know people are going to start throwing this, oh, well, look what he did in the finals. He averaged, what, 35, 8, and 6 or something crazy like that. I don't remember these specifics, but he shot like 54% from the field. He shot over 45% from three. He was fantastic in the finals. I'll give him that. He had a great, great series, and he was deserving of that finals MVP trophy, 100%. Now, here's the thing that's going to bug me a little bit. When we talk about legacies, when we compare players, sometimes people are going to be like, oh, well, he has a ring, he doesn't. Kevin Durant has a ring. But Kevin Durant's ring is so cheap because of what he had to do to get it. He had to do what guys that are like 35 do. I mean, look at what Carl what Malone, like I, like I um, alluded to earlier. 
Carl Malone jumped on the Lakers bandwagon. Gary Payton jumped on the Heat bandwagon. Tracy McGrady jumped on the Spurs bandwagon. And David West, of course, who really wasn't a superstar, he was a star at one point with the, with the Hornets, he jumped on the Spurs and Warriors bandwagons. This is something we see older players that, you know, aren't as capable do these days. Paul Pierce just did it, um, you know, and that's going to good teams at the end of your career to see if you can contribute as a role player and, you know, get a ring at the end so you can, you, your legacy can be more intact. And we see this all the time. And the problem with Kevin Durant is that he did that and he's 28 years old. You, It's unbelievable that he stooped that low and look, I don't want to really get into it again because I've already talked about why I hate the move so much. But when we talk about this ring and, and what future rings will mean, because look, a lot of people have a lot, have, have different views on this. You know, Kevin Durant, is he staying in Golden State his whole career? I don't know. I, I doubt it. I think if he stays in Golden State his whole career, he's going to win like six rings. I think. I mean, that would be ridiculous. Maybe not six, maybe like four. But still, look at that team. Look at how it's like Draymond Green and Klay Thompson are young players. And and they seem like vets. Steph Curry, yeah, he's 29. You know, he's going he's gonna to decline a little bit. And Kevin Durant, in three or four years, is probably going to start declining. Maybe even two, two, three. I don't know. He doesn't look anything close to declining. So maybe I'd say three or four years for Kevin Durant to start declining. But that team has a foundation. They've got a really good system. They have a really good organization, coaching, role-playing their unity as a team. They will always be good, I think, just because of who they have coaching and the fact that they play for each other. They play... The one thing I'll give the Warriors credit for, really, is and that I admire about them is the fact that everybody is so, so unselfish. It's actually unbelievable how well these guys play together. They always make the right pass. They got so many guys on their team that can do that. They shoot the right shots. They're all efficient. They all play defense. I mean, it's just such a good team mentality, which is, you know, why they're so solid. And they don't really have these, you know, bad stretches. They don't have any adversity to go through because they figured it out, it seems like. And teams don't play like this. You see a lot of iso ball throughout the league. But iso ball doesn't really win you championships, okay? You got to have a good team system. You got to have a good team. You got to have some superstars like the Warriors. And then you got to have role players. And you got to have your superstars be able to play, like, pass the ball, play like role players sometimes. Because, you know, the third guy needs to take a back seat, right? Um, so there's that. What is this Warriors team going to be? If Kevin Durant finishes his career with seven rings all with the Warriors, uh, he's not better than LeBron. He's not better than Jordan or Kobe. He's not. Because this is cheap. If he was in OKC, he did that shit. Yeah, he would be he would be in that conversation. If he was in OKC and he won five, six, seven rings with OKC and Russell Westbrook and that team, the dude would be a top five player. The dude would legit be top three probably. He would be right with LeBron James. Maybe better. So it's so hard to say. And I say, and, and rings defining legacy, look, is a difference between um, zero and six. Like if you win one ring compared to zero rings, there's not that much of a difference. If you win six rings, and, and with how close you get, if you win zero rings and you've been to the finals like once, compared to winning the finals once, it's not that big of a deal. You win six rings, you create a legacy for yourself, that's crazy. But if you do it in Golden State with that stacked team, it's just... You know, you're playing just mortals <laughs> and you're the all-star team almost. That's that's how that's how it feels like, at least. Um, so it's really hard for me to for me to grade that part. Um, but if Kevin Durant leaves Golden State, this is where it gets interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Because this Golden State team might as well be the most dominant team we've ever seen. But if Kevin Durant leaves Golden State and wins a ring with another team where he is the clear number one option. He doesn't join a crazy good team because they're good. He doesn't, like, if the Cavs beat them next year, it's not like, if he joins the Cavs, and that's just fucking so stupid. Um, <laughs> if he joined, like I said something the other day, um, someone was saying, KD had a chance, I believe it was GD's highlight, shout out GD. Um, he was saying, I, I think it was him that said, Kevin Durant had a choice to make or break the NBA. Make the NBA, like, like ruin or fix, basically. Fix the NBA by going to the Celtics. First of all, you fix the cakewalk in the East. You get another power force, Celtics and Cavs. So you got two teams that are really good in the East. And you give the West, you know, you don't stack it up as much. You take away from the West, give to the East. That's exactly what we need. We get another superstar, super duper star in the East. 
That would be awesome. That would have been great. And look, the Celtics wouldn't be as good as the Warriors, but they'd, they'd be battling with LeBron. And he'd be the number one guy, bona fide by far. He would join a team concept where he could be the, stu- the superstar of the team, the number one guy. And it would all work out, and he would be able to, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a great situation for him. He'd get to the conference finals basically every year, battle out with LeBron's even get to the finals, and the Warriors wouldn't be overpowered, and you'd still have the Spurs, and the Thunder would be worse, but the Rockets would still be good, and we'd have a few really good teams in the East, a few really good teams in the West. Everything would be a lot better that way. But he broke the NBA instead and went to the Warriors. And now, look, congrats to the Warriors, I guess. Look, I don't really have anything against the Warriors if you're going to... If you have a shot to pursue Kevin Durant in free agency, you do it, right? And it's, it's up to Kevin Durant. But Kevin Durant shouldn't do what he did. But the Warriors, there's no there's no blame there. I mean, they just, they're a really good team. They play as a team. They're a really good organization. And and I don't blame them at all. It's just the Kevin Durant part that, you know, is, is really is really tough for me to, you know, take in, to acknowledge, to say, oh, now Kevin Durant has a ring. It just, it just doesn't feel right. Um... That's going to do it. So the answer to this question is, yeah, the ring counts. Obviously, it counts. It's Kevin Durant has a ring. But that ring that Kevin Durant has, it's not worth a lot to me. I don't. I think he has maybe the cheapest ring I've ever seen. Because like what these ring chasers do, they're not that good anymore. They're role players on your team. They don't join the best team to be the best player on the best. Like, it would, it would, that would be like LeBron joining the Warriors instead of KD maybe last. Like, if he'd lost doesn't make any sense. Um, That's going to do it. I'm out. Thanks for watching, y'all. Peace.